Let us go to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. How it all began. Genesis chapter 1 from verses 1. If you are there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness called, he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day and God said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and let the dry land appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth mm. and God called the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters called he seas and God saw that it was good and God said let the earth bring forth the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And it continued just going there, going there, going there, going there, going there. That's where we get now to 26. Let's go to 26. After God had created everything, that's when he said, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his image, in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Hallelujah. Verse 1 says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So the theme of my message today is captioned, in the beginning. Please open your heart, open your mind. Open yourself so that you can hear what I'm about to teach you and share with you. Paul said, beloved, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning these matters. So even as I'm teaching, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning these matters. I want you to know these matters that I'm about to teach you. For many benefits sake. For a lot of benefits sake. At some point, Jesus, I think in the book of Matthew, is it Matthew chapter 19? They were asking me about marriage and other things, and there's a question that he answered, and he said, in the beginning it was not so, in relations to marriages and divorce and other things. But he said, remember about the issues of the adultery and, the, and other things, but he said, in the beginning it was not so. And I want to tell you that it is not only marriage that was perverted, many things were perverted, to the extent that as it is now, in the beginning it was not so. So in our presentation today we are going to look at how it was in the beginning the scripture that we have read there it is talking about creation how god created the earth how god created the world and everything that we see how god was creating the entire universe that is the verse that we laid that, that, that's the chapter actually that we read there genesis chapter one verses one starts by telling us to say in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the word heavens there in the Hebrew is actually prulo hashamahim. Or shamahim. That is prulo. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Very interesting. This is one. In the beginning, God created. The word God is Elohim. Created the heaven and the earth. Then verses 2, it tells us, and the earth 
was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord hovered upon the face of the waters. We are going to pause there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verses 2. The heavens that were created by God and the earth that was created by God. The earth that was created by God. Verses 2, it's telling us that the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. There is a problem within, with these two verses. Because if God created the heaven and the earth on verses 1, verses 2, why is then are we told that the earth is without form and void? How can God create something that is formless and something that is void? Because if you check the nature of God, the entire chapter, you discover that whatever you create in say, and God saw that it was good. And God saw that it was good. But why is it that the earth is not good and God created it without form and void? The earth cannot be created like that. How do I know that there's something wrong there? It is because there's a contradiction. If you look at the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verses uh, 18. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 18. It tells us something that I want you to consider. It's very much important. Verses 18, the Bible says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heaven, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it and created it not in vain. For he formed it to be, create, to be inhabited. So that tells you to say when God created it, he didn't form it in vain. The word vain there is the word void. He didn't form it empty. God does not create anything void and empty. Why then is the Bible tells us to say, when God created the heavens and the earth, then the earth is without form and void. There is a contradiction there. And I'll give you scriptures when you go home. You should begin to look at those verses. You should begin to look at those verses. There's a contradiction with Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 4. Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 11. And Isaiah chapter 18 verses 30. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 4. Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 11. And Isaiah chapter 18 verses 30. So there's a problem there with these scriptures if you bring them together. That will be able to tell you that when the earth was created, it was in perfect shape. Everything was okay. When it was created. But there is something that happened between verses 1 and verses 2. In between. That made the earth to be void, to be without shape. That's why I told you to say you should first study it. Then after you study, you discover that many theologians have been confused. And there's a theory that is called the gap theory. The gap theory supports what I'm telling you that there was a problem there between verses 1 of Genesis chapter 1 and verses 2. In between Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, there is a gap that has to be considered. And today we are going to be talking about that same gap. Don't forget that the one that wrote Genesis is Moses. Moses wrote the book of Genesis, but Moses was born in the book of Exodus. Moses was writing things that happened to, to the earth before he was born. Moses even wrote about his birth, how he was born, how he was a baby. He wrote himself. How did he write? God took him into a vision, into a trance, backdated everything and started showing him. So a lot of them were metaphorical. It starts at Moses was just writing them up, putting them in order. Some of them were not explained clearly by theologians and by people that were canonizing the scriptures. They were leaving certain loopholes without analyzing them to the fullest. So in between Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verses 2, there is a gap there. I'll give you many scriptures to know. How do I know that there's a gap? It is because if you see the, 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 the space there, it will tell us to say God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. How can God create something that is without form and void? And the next thing we are told is that darkness was upon the face of the deep. Where is the deep coming from? 
and the Spirit of the Lord hovered on the waters. Where did the water come from? Do you know that th throughout your study of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, you don't find God creating water? God is not creating water there. Where did it come from? Let's be moving. The Spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the many waters. Then as the Spirit is hovering upon these waters, there is the deep there. And the Spirit of the Lord is just hovering there. And it is hovering. And God says, let there be light. And if you check the let there be light, it's not even a creation language. It's not even a creation language. Actually, in the Hebrew, it says, light be. That's in the Hebrew. So these contradictions will be able to tell you that Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, is creation. Genesis chapter 1, verses 2, is destruction. Genesis chapter 1, verses 3, is restoration. Please follow me. Because if you hear, let there be light, let there be this. What God is doing there is not creating, but he's just restoring what was restored, what was lost. Light be, this be, this be. He said a lot of things there that we are be, should be this, this should be this. One of the, one of the things that God said that is very much interesting, it is what we find here. Praise the Lord. How he created the land. Look at this, huh? This is one of the things that is very much interesting. How the land was created. How the land was created. Are you, are you willing to see it? Are you willing to see it? Verses 9. He says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Let the dry land appear. Let the dry land appear. To appear means something had disappeared. It was already there. It had disappeared, so he just wants it to appear. Let the dry land appear. So the dry land was covered by the many waters. It was already there. So God says, let the dry land appear. In other words, dry land, you're already there. I just want you to appear, to come out of the waters to appear. And that's how the dry land appeared. And when the dry land appeared, that's when he started. Do you realize that if you study the Bible very well, God never even created the grass. He taught the earth, said, let the earth bring forth. In other words, the earth was having grass in itself. It was hiding grass. So God says, bring forth. Then the earth brought forth the grass. The beds were never created. He says, and the waters brought forth the beds. In short, these beds were there, but it is like there, were, there was some waters that swallowed them, that killed them. And God had to say, let the beds come out. And they were vomited by the waters. Where is this water? Remember there was the flood in the days of Noah. But before Noah, there is what is believed to be a flood. And we call it the Lucifer's flood. Let me show you something. Let's go to the book of Peter. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 says, For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens, get this, huh? the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was been over overflowed with the water perished being overflowed with the water perished no 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 I, didn't, I, I know you didn't get this one. let me show you it says for this they willingly are ignorant of there are people that are willingly ignorant of this that by the word of God the heavens were of odd and the earth standing out of the water do you know where the earth is standing out of the water? Remember the scripture I've given you in Genesis chapter 1 verses 9 where it says, let the dry land appear. And that is the earth standing out of the water. Okay? Standing out of the water and in the water. 
whereby the world that was then was been overflowed with the water perished. That tells you to say before this, before Adam, there was a world that perished because of it was overflowed by the water. There was a flood, the pre-Adamic flood that killed anything that existed around that time. Before Adam was created, there was a flood. This is the second flood. It is the first flood, rather. It's called the Lucifer's flood. The second flood that we are told about in the book of Genesis chapter 6 there, it is the Noah's flood. It is Noah's flood. Many people, when they read this scripture in the book of Second uh, uh, Peter, they think it is talking about Noah's flood. No, it's not talking about the Noah's flood. No. This scripture is talking about who? The flood that existed earlier where the dry land had to appear. In Noah's flood, the, the land was okay. It was already there. There was no land that appeared from nowhere, from the waters, no. But this is talking about the time when the dry land appeared. The earth stood out of the water, came out of the water. Which period was this, ladies and gentlemen? Which period was this? It was before Adam was created. There was the earth there. It was created. Everything was in perfect peace. Then God destroyed it by a flood. Then when he came, now he started recreating things and restoring things. That's what we see there. But it is not the full creation that we see. I'm going to be giving you things to be, to be proving. And we'll be proving slowly. So before Adam... Before Genesis chapter 1 verses 2, in between verses 1 and verses 2, there's a space, there's a gap there. And this gap, we are not told how many years it was. Do you know that evolution scientists and what we see in our Christian circle, we are contradicting, they are contradicting us. In the Christian circle, they believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. But scientists, they'll tell you to say, the earth is at least not less than 6, not less than six million years old. 4 million. And they go up to billions of years. That's what they say. But Christians, they say it's 6,000. Is the earth 6,000 years old? I doubt. But I strongly believe Adam, man, is 6,000 years old. Because when God created Adam, it is exactly 6,000 to death. But between Genesis 1, chapter 1, verses 1, chapter 1, verses 2, in between there, there are many years that might have passed that can make what Santa is saying to be true. That can make it that the earth is billions and millions of years. Because in between there, there is a gap. It could have been millions of years that passed before verses 2 came. Because what is complicating is that, what is complicating everything is that, the carbon-14, which is the oldest system of testing and, uh, you know, measurement of scientists and other things, it is showing that the earth is millions of years old. But where are those millions? Apart from that, they discover bones. They are discovering bones of dinosaurs. Ever heard of dinosaurs and tyrannosaurs? And dinosaurs, they are saying... That those animals lived millions and millions of years ago. It's there in the Bible, we'll see it. And it is true. I believe the dinosaurs that have been talked about millions of years ago, they were part of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, in between Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verses 2. In between verses 1 and verses 2, that's where they were. The dinosaurs, they, are, they were there. Because when they check them, they study them, they are, you can be able to see that these animals were there. But how come? Because we believe that this, uh, the, the, these guys, they tell us true events. Sometimes they lie. But these animals were big. Some of the dinosaurs, were, they, they would weigh about 16 elephants. Some of the dinosaurs were about, is it 36 meters tall? They used to be very big 
creatures. Very big creatures. We don't have them now. But they existed. Scientists have got bones all over. They have got bones of dinosaurs all over. And they have proven it time for years now. The dinosaurs are millions of years. But then if it started from Genesis chapter 3, about uh, chapter, chapter 1 from Adam, 6,000, then they are telling us that the Bible is, is not right. No, the Bible is real. But these years in between, they are the ones that they are not understanding. Because animals, these dinosaurs, they were there. They really existed. And they coexisted with man. They were all destroyed because of the flood. The first Adamic flood. Not the flood of Noah. No, Noah didn't see uh, dinosaurs. No. Maybe he saw them. But if he saw them in the days of Noah, then they didn't enter the ark. Because dinosaurs were big. They couldn't even fit in the ark. These animals, God created them deliberately. Brought them on the earth. Because before the flood there's a man called dr kaba he was doing a research and the research that he was doing he was doing what they call the uh there's what they call the energized water please follow me the energized water it is believed that it is the same water that was flowing because remember when god is created, he says let there be the firmament you know the firmament huh? The humid, the heavenlies, the water that was there, there was no rain by then, remember? God had not caused it to rain. The water that was flowing, according to Genesis chapter 2, it talks about the mist that was coming from the ground to water the Garden of Eden. Remember that verse? That water, the mist that was coming from there. If you, re you study the earth, some of you remember the geography earth, that the earth is formed in three, huh? it is divided in three. There is the mantle, there's the crust and the what? The core. It's three. These are the layers. But in between the mantle and the crust, that is where the water used to be. Coming from there. That is where this mist was coming from. The subterranean, sub, uh, subterranean chambers. That is where the waters were coming from. And when the water comes out there, it used to come out energized. And Dr. Kaba did a research... And when it got and formed uh, energized water, they gave energized water to the fish. And fish had to grow two times better than the normal fish. They got energized water and watered a maize corn. It grew up to 13 feet tall. So it is believed that this is the same water that was watering that the dinosaurs were drinking. That's why they were growing that big. Then as they were drinking that water, remember the water was watering the plants. So the plants were growing so rapid. They were growing fast. They were growing fast. That's why those days before the flood of Noah, people were living 100, 900 years. Because the oxygen was very good. The water was very good. Their health system was very good. So that if a person had to cut himself, within about a day, the, the wound will heal because of the good oxygen. And the water that was there. So these dinosaurs were living there. These dinosaurs were moving up and down. But remember the leaves were, it, were growing so big. The plants and everything. So God created these dinosaurs. Because if you, you check science. They will tell you the dinosaurs were herbivorous. They were not carnivores. So God, as I think it, he needed them so that they should be eating up plants that were growing so fast. So that the earth should be covered by leaves and plants. But then, after the flood, God didn't want them because the way they were stereotyped and created, the way they were tailored, they were supposed to be breathing a certain level of oxygen. So they needed oxygen because of their body size to be able to function their brain and everything and water. So he even knew that they were going to die, so he couldn't keep them for long. So that's how come they died at some point. And the Bible says he that created them, he, would have, he, he knew how he was going to take them. I'll give you scriptures. So this is the space that you see in between there. Because in the beginning, God created. The word create there is the word bara. And the word bara means to fashion it very well. To dress up something very neat. Finish it up. But if we go verses 2 and we hear that 
it is not without form. No, no, no. Then this is a contradiction. So it was created very perfect. Very perfect. Very perfect. Until the flood came and destabilized everything. Just in between them. Can I show you something that is going to surprise you as well? Do you know that the Bible told us that uh, Lucifer fell, but you don't know how Lucifer found himself in the Garden of Eden? Do you know that Lucifer in Genesis chapter 3, he was already Satan, he was already a Satan, he was already a fallen angel. I mean, actually, Lucifer is not a fallen angel, I'll explain next week. But he was already backslidden, he was already fallen, he was already casted down. Where was he casted down? No, forget about the, the vision that John is telling you in, in uh, John chapter, in Revelation chapter 12. But at which period? Because Lucifer is already found in the garden there. It is in between that same period that Lucifer fell. So before Adam was created, there was a race that we call the pre-Adamic race. There were people, they were, I don't know if they were human beings like us, but there were people that were created. There was a race of individuals that were created, that were washed away by the flood. There were cities that were created. There were animals that were created. Do you know that now scientists are discovering cities under the sea? In many seas and oceans, they are discovering cities. Those were the cities that were during the pre-Adamic race. And they'll tell you that cities are millions of years old. They are pre-Adamic. So have we said, are you able to see that verses 1 and verses 2 are very complicated? They are very different. Now, there was a race there that was created. Human beings that were living. Now, now, I'm using the word human beings just for, uh, you know, just for convenience. But I don't know if they were human beings like us. Maybe they were not like us, but there was a race that was living. These fellas could even build cities. They were living because it is proven that dinosaurs and human beings at some point they coexisted. Because they found bones of dinosaurs alongside bones of human beings. But it was like the, it was the finger of a human being, but it was like a, a big human being. Like giants. I'll talk about giants next week. But it was like dipped in the sand and the dinosaur leg was also dipped in the sand, in the soil. But when the time they started to check and measure very well, it was as if the dinosaur was running away from something together with a human being, something frightening. And they were running somewhere. As they were running, a human being had to fall and the, the hand was dipped in the, in the mud. And that's how he got stuck there and died. What were they running from? I believe they were running from the pre-Adamic flood that was coming. When it was coming, they saw the water coming, they tried to run and they were overwhelmed by the waters. That is what happened in between. That is the gap that is there. One of the scriptures that will give you what I'm saying is verse 26. God said, let us make money in our image. After our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of his Now verse 28. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish. That's a prefix, huh? Replenish. Replenish. To replenish means to refill. To refill. So if there was no filling before, what was this supposed to refill? Because the earth was all, at some point it was replenished. So Adam is made to replenish it. In other words, it was filled at first. But at some point it was deleted and destroyed. So God said, ah, go there and replenish it, refill it. The way I filled it at first, but you need to redo it. That is the word replenish. Because you can't tell somebody to replenish if there is no replenishing at first. It is just the same as you're telling somebody to say refill. The word replenish means refill. Can you tell somebody, say, I'm giving you this empty bottle, refill it, if there's not, there was nothing inside? There has to be something inside the first that has been taken out that is telling you to, to refill. So there was a race that had filled the earth at first. So after they died, God is telling Adam, say, now refill it. Refill it. 
Don't forget it is the same way that God is telling Ab uh, Noah after the flood. He says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. He's telling the Noah to replenish. Why? Because there, was, there were human beings that were destroyed. So Noah is only with him and the wife and the sons. They are out of the ark and God is telling them, refill like it was before. So begin to multiply and refilling. Oh boy, I view people. So that means there was a race. There was a race. Where did Lucifer fail? Between verses 1 and verses 2. In between them. That's where Lucifer fell. Let's go back there. Let's go back. I think now your, your, your mind is opening up. Praise the Lord. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1. This is 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Have you seen it there? I want you to notice something there. I want you to notice something. This is going to help you. This is going to help you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth is at form and void. Now look at verses 2. And the, it says, And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. How many things are you seeing there? Darkness. Are you seeing darkness? Are you seeing form and void? Are you seeing the waters there? Now let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 23. Are you there? Hear what he says. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. Are you getting it? I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. Where did we see the issue of form and void here? Huh? In Genesis chapter 1, verses 2, huh? Jeremiah is telling us how he saw it now. Look at what he saw. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. And the heavens, and they didn't have light. Remember those darkness? Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And Jeremiah is telling us, say, the, earth, the heavens were without light. That means there was darkness. He says, and I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills, and they moved. They moved lightly. And be, I beheld, and lo, there was no man. And all the beds of the heavens were fled. I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And all the cities, you see the cities eh? All the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. And, they de and by his fierce anger. Ah. Let me show you something that you might have not seen. This, this is. Let me show you something. It will interest you, huh? And I behold, and lo, there was no man, and all the beds of the heavens were fled. I behold, and lo, there was no man. Many people think like this is talking about the flood of Noah. In the flood of Noah, was there no man? There were men, because Noah was saved. He was a man. His, his children were saved. They were men. The wife, they were men. All these were, were there. But this instance that the prophet is seeing, when he saw it, there was no man because of the flood that took place. And he says there was darkness. The earth was without form and void. In the days of Noah, was the earth without form and void. No, it was with form. There was mountains there. Because remember, the boat went at Mount Ararat. That's why it stopped. But here he says, and there was the mountain trembled. There were no mountains there. He says that there were no cities. And the birds fled. There were no birds. But in the days of Noah, don't forget those, there were beds. Huh? Don't forget he sent a raven first. Don't forget he sent a, 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 a dove later. That means beds were there. But this incident that Jeremiah is seeing, there is no man. There is no beds. Which is this incident? Genesis chapter 1 verses 2. That's what the prophet is seeing there. That is what the prophet is seeing there. An instance where there was no man. The Adamic, the pre-Adamic race was all destroyed because of the flood. They were all destroyed because of the flood. Ah, uh, today what I'll feed you. Oh God. Can, can, can we read it again? 
I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. Let's read verses 2. Genesis chapter 1, verses 2. Hear what it says. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Isn't it the same thing being talked about? Are you seeing it? I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. And I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the beds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, Lord, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. So there were cities that this pre-Adamic race was building that was destroyed. The earth was once formed, but it was submerged in the waters. Submerged in the waters. There were the waters there. There were the waters there. There were the waters. And it was destroyed because of the fierce anger of the Lord. The Lord was very angry and he destroyed everything. Messed up everything. And after now, he just left it abandoned like that. After millions of years had passed, that's when he came. He said, ah, even if I was upset of these guys, but ah, let, let there be light anyway. And he brings light now. He says, okay, let the, the earth, dry land appear. And he begins, what we are seeing there, God is restoring He's renovating the earth. He's not creating the earth. That earth was already created in chapter 1, verses 1. But this time around, out of the anger, God had cut down the anger. He says, okay, I destroyed these people, but let me start it afresh. So he's gathering the earth, let the dry land appear. Last time the flood came, the, the grass, where was the grass? It entered, the, okay, let the earth bring forth the grass that was destroyed. Then the birds come out and let there be lights in the firmament. And he begins to gather those things. That was after millions of years. That is what is happening there. So what we are seeing, it is not creation. That is the restoration. Renovating the earth. Do not forget there is a scripture in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Huh? Verses 3, are you there? It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed, were framed by the word of God. The worlds were what? Framed by the ways of God. So that the, the things which are seen were made not out of things that do appear. The world were framed. The word translated framed is the word renovate. The world were renovated by the word of God. When was the world being renovated? Genesis chapter 1, starting from verse 3, when God says, let there be life. That, let there be life. That was renovating now. So the world were renovated. That is the renovation of the earth there. Let there be this. Let there be this. Let there be this. God is renovating the earth. More than conquerors family, demonstrating God's power and revealing Jesus.